All right. I know I said uh, affect the vocals. I actually meant the drums on the end of the last video. So let's add a reverb to the drums. So the main things I want to add a reverb to uh, snare and toms. Almost never would I add a reverb to a kick drum, but there's some instances where it actually works well, but usually with electronic type stuff. Um, but let's add a reverb to the snare drum. I'm going to use a stereo send because I know which one I'll probably use. Uh, but So I go to send, and I'm going to go to new track. In doing that, I just call it a stereo uh, aux input. We'll call it a drum verb. A couple ones to choose from. Uh, one I like, which is part of the Slate bundle. Not a sponsor, but uh, I highly recommend it. I think you get the most bang for your buck with that setup. Is um, I'll show you here. Let's go to reverb, multi-channel reverb. It's uh, not real, it's just print plates. Um, where are you? Verb Suite Classics, very bottom. This Verb Suite Classics uh, emulates a lot of, uh, you know, especially 80s and 90s digital reverbs and stuff like that. So sometimes that's just what you want for drums. There's those other choices you can do, and I'll show you the other things that I do choose to use. But uh, I'm just going to go to, uh, is there presets I can grab? Um, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to load the device. I'm going to load this um, FG16X. And I'm just going to open up the ambience at 2.6 seconds. This is a uh, AMS device emulation, which is used a lot in drums, especially like gated drum sounds. So let's uh, hear if this sounds any good here. It may or may not. I haven't tested this out. It sounds a lot like I would like, but a little bit long. So I'm going to take it down to maybe about a second and a half or so. And I may fiddle with that once I bring the other instruments in. Now, one thing I do recommend is to not be hesitant to EQ a reverb track. So you can EQ the output of reverb. If I feel it's a little dense in the middle, you know. So you can always EQ that. And sometimes compression it sounds cool on um, effects and stuff too. Um, maybe not. So let me add that same reverb send to the toms. I might have to dial down the levels, but I'm option drag, option drag, option drag. So now. I get to where the toms are. A little fade there. It might seem a little much, but we'll hear how it sounds in the track. Now, one thing I will say is that when I dial in the snare drum time of the reverb, like I kind of want the decay to be mostly gone by the time the next snare drum hits. Is kind of how I how I adjust the time. So it depends on the tempo of the song. So you hear that it decays mostly all the way by the time the next snare hits. Otherwise, it just is extra wash if it's too long. So that's about the length that I start with. Now, one other thing that I would like to do is sort of submix all of these. That way I can apply a compression compressor across it. Um, make sure the edits are tight here at the beginning. Yep, looks good. Um, so in order to do that, I'm going to take all of the tracks, including the reverb, shift click with all those selected. I'm going to hold option shift in Pro Tools, go to the output, and I'm going to set it to new track, stereo aux input, and I'll call it that drum sub mix so now the drum sub mix is here and drag it to the bottom of the drums 
And so now when I play all the drums, they're all going to be going through this fader. I'm going to make sure to solo safe it, command S, solo safe it, and now. So I have a single fader. Um, that way I could do things like compress it. Uh, an example of one I like to use, this one's from McDSP. This is their retro compressor. This is what's great for parallel compression, especially on drums. I, I bought it just for parallel compression on drums. Um, I can, I can you know, squish it a little bit. Fast attack, fairly fastish release. And then dial a mix down to maybe 40% or less. That allows you to kind of get a little bit more crashy sounding. I gotta keep it low for the time being. I can always dial that back up again. You know, other things you can do is maybe uh, EQ the drums all together at once. Uh, so it's nice. And also somebody's like, ah, oh, sounds great, but uh, the drums need to be a little louder. You just go, okay, I'm just gonna grab this drum sub and bring everything up and down. And you'll see that throughout this mix, I'm gonna take the different sort of categories of instruments and put them in their own sub mix category. So that's effects on the drum. And so that's, that's what I'm gonna be using for the, for the time being. I'm going to adjust the EQ and stuff as we go, so you'll see that. But, um, yeah, that's mixing drums so far.